I've developed countless voice AI agents, from simple voice chatbots to more sophisticated multi-agent systems. While most deployments went according to plan, I've definitely had my fair share of mistakes and technical hurdles along the way. So today, let's talk about that. The worst mistakes you're most likely to make when first building voice AI agents. The first and by far the most common mistake I've seen is rigid or unnatural conversations. This is an issue that is always to do with the prompt. And I often see it happening when the AI at first wasn't doing what we wanted it to do. So to fix that, we forced it to act, think, and say things in one way only so that it does end up complying with what we wanted it to do. The issue with that is that now the AI has lost all of its agency and forcing it to act one way has caused the conversation to be extremely rigid or unnatural. Okay, so I'm going to uh, show you a good prompt and a bad prompt, one that creates a, you know, natural flowing conversation and then one that creates a rigid or an unnatural conversation we will first show you the unnatural one and then i'll show you kind of the things i changed um, in the prompt to make it much better and more natural okay so this is the first um prompt it is pretty simple as you can see it says you are an ai voice assistant for the velvet vindaloo luxury indian restaurant you must follow this sequence how many guests will be dining how what date would you like to dine what time would you prefer May I have your full name and number? Confirm, let me confirm all details. Rules, use the exact phrases without variation. Do not proceed until current step is complete. Then we also have AI begin the message. So it will say, uh, thank you for calling the Velvet Vindaloo. How can I help you? Now, if we call this agent, we will see how you know rigid and unnatural this conversation is. Thank you for calling the Velvet Vindaloo. How can I help you? Hi there, I wanted to know um, your corkage fee. I'm here to assist with reservations. How many guests will be dining? Oh, well, I don't know if we're gonna be dining because if the corkage fee is ridiculous, like obviously don't wanna dine there. So do you, do you know that or, at all or not? I'm here to assist with reservations. How many guests will be dining? Uh, fine, whatever. How many guests will be? Uh, four. What date would you like to dine? Well, I just still want to know the corkish fee. Like, can you really not help me with that? I'm here to assist with reservations. What date would you like to dine? Okay, whatever. Okay, so that's the first one. Obviously, like, you know, I've kind of over-exaggerated it, but this is often how people prompt um, because we want to make sure that the agent is doing what we want it to do, i.e. getting reservations. And they kind of overly, they make it way too strict in the sense that you know, follow this sequence, how many guests will be dining, what date would you like to dine? And the AI just knows, oh, I can only follow this sequence. Okay, so the next prompt, um, if I just quickly delete this, is this one right here. And essentially <clears throat> what I've changed is I'm gonna add a knowledge base as well to this prompt. I've told it a few different things. So first of all, I haven't told it you have to follow any structure of the conversation. So except for me telling it that it has to be brief, with its responses. It has to have natural conversational language and it should be very clear about dates, times and party size. Then I've also told it that when it goes through the reservation process, whenever that is, there's no set point on when this conversation must go into the reservation process, it should get this info, which is the number of guests, the date, the time, the name and the phone number. And then I've given it some more notes, which is just like, if you receive related questions to our restaurant, such as, do you have a dress code? You must check the knowledge base. So in the knowledge base, I have a few answers to questions like, do you guys accept Amex? You know, what is your corkage fee? Things like that. They are all answered in the knowledge base. So that will allow the agent to be more natural in the sense that, you know, it can help out with questions that it has answers to. And then this is, you know, again, testing edge cases. And then if we have a response that we don't like, we can add that to the prompt to improve it. Then I also added, you want to be authentic and natural in moments of thought, similar to a human answering calls from a restaurant would think during the conversation, add um or like. I don't want it to just spit in um or like into random places. I want it to be during thought, during moments of uncertainty where humans would usually add those phrases like um, like, like, things like that. Then I added, remember you are in a conversation with someone on the phone, the inputs you receive are what they have said and your responses are what you will say back to them. It is crucial that the AI knows that what it is going to be outputting is going to be said in the conversation so that it doesn't output random things and it knows that everything it's saying is going to be 
you know, the speech in the conversation. And I've told it, your goal is simply to be a helpful assistant, answering any questions you can, and also helping with reservations. I'm not saying it's goal is to get reservations. I'm saying it's goal is to be helpful, answer questions, and then if the person wants to reserve, and potentially if the AI will ask, would you like to get a reservation, um, you know, help with that reservation process. Again, the first message is, uh, thank you for calling the Velvet Vindaloo. Okay, so now let's test this agent and see how it is in the conversation. Thank you for calling the Velvet Vindaloo. How can I help you? Hi there. I wanted to um, ask if you have a cork fee. Yes, our corkage fee is $35 per bottle with a maximum of two bottles per table. Would you like to make a reservation? Uh, yes, I would actually. Could I get a table for four uh, for this Friday, 8th of November? Sure. What time would you like the reservation for? Actually, just before, do you guys accept Amex by any chance? Yes, we do accept American Express. Now, what time would you like your table for four this Friday, November 8th? Is it possible to do 10 p.m.? Yes, we can do 10 p.m. for you. May I have your name and phone number, please? Uh, my name is Hugo and the phone number is just like the one that you're on the conversation with. So, uh, yeah, just get it from that. I'm sorry, but I need you to provide the phone number for the reservation. Could you please share it with me? Oh yeah. Okay, fine. It's, uh, one, two, three, three, two, one, six, seven, eight, one. Thank you, Hugo. Just to confirm, I have a reservation for four guests on Friday, November 8th at 10 p.m. with the phone number 123-321-6781. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. Great. Your reservation is confirmed. We look forward to seeing you on Friday, November 8th at 10 p.m. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye-bye. You're welcome. Okay. So there we go. As you can see, that conversation was way better, i.e. I could, um, you know, pause that reservation process, ask it, do you accept Amex? It was able to check the knowledge base and, you know, in the knowledge I provided it, I did accept Amex. Like that was the answer to that question, um, which it did correctly. As you saw, it was just a more natural conversation. It added a few arms or likes and it just felt flowing better. The second mistake is no fallback responses for edge cases. If you've ever built voice AI agents, you know that you have to thoroughly test different edge cases so that you can fix their issues or the errors that it's causing in the prompt itself. While this is definitely a good practice and <laughs> essentially a must, it is impossible to test for every edge case. And that's why it's really important to have a fallback response for those edge cases that you were not able to test before putting your agent into production. You can do this so easily with just a single line in the prompt like this. If a user asks an irrelevant question or a question that you are unable to confidently provide the answer for, simply say, unfortunately, I can't assist you with that. Is there anything else that I can help you with? Now, this is an example of a fallback response for edge cases that aren't tested. The reason why this is a fallback response is just because if the AI isn't sure about a question that it is able to answer or doesn't think it can answer, then it will say that thing. So what we'll do is, like I've mentioned already, we have a knowledge base for this agent and I'm gonna ask a question that it doesn't have the answer to and therefore it should say, unfortunately, I don't know. It shouldn't say no or yes, it should say, I don't know. So what we will do is test it. I'm gonna simply ask the AI, do you guys have a tasting menu? Now, in the knowledge base, there's no information about the tasting menu. So it should realistically say, I'm not sure. I don't have that information. It shouldn't say no, it should not say yes either. So let's try that. Thank you for calling the Velvet Vindaloo. How can I help you? Um, I just wanted to know if you guys have a tasting menu. Um, we don't have a tasting menu, but we offer a variety of dishes to choose from. Would you like to make a reservation? Uh, no, thank you. Okay, so there we go. As you saw, it said no, which is actually incorrect as it's not in the knowledge base and therefore it doesn't concretely know that it is a no. Instead, it just believes and hallucinates that it is a no because it, there is no yes, if that makes sense. So now we add this fallback response and now we can ask it again. Thank you for calling the Velvet Vindaloo. How can I help you? Um, I just wanted to know if you guys have a tasting menu. Um, unfortunately, I can't assist you with that. Is there anything else that I can help you with? Uh, no, that'll be it. Thank you. You're welcome. If you need anything else, feel free to call back. 
There we go. So that was our fallback response. As you saw, we asked a question that wasn't in the knowledge base and therefore it wasn't able to confidently provide the answer for. So it said the fallback response. Now, you can improve this fallback response even more by saying, you know, if the question was related to knowledge, say, unfortunately, I can't help you with that because I just don't know. And or if it's related to something else, say, unfortunately, I don't have access to help you with that thing, whatever it is to get the fallback response to be even more personalized and you know more natural in the conversation that you just got to do a few more things in the prompt way. But, you know, that doesn't matter too much. OK, the third mistake, and this is one that I made when I first started building voice AI agents was not tracking performance. Voice AI and voice AI agents are such a new piece of technology. And because of that, their performance has to be monitored extremely closely. By performance tracking, I mean a few things. How is the agent doing in the conversation? Are the conversations looking similar to what our ideal conversation looks like? Do people seem satisfied with the conversation? Is our agent talking about relevant topics? All of these things can be inferred from the transcript. And then we also have a few different performance metrics like the success of a call. So how often is the agent achieving the goal we're setting out with the conversation? So let's say with our restaurant reservation agent, the only goal is to answer questions. So how many questions are being answered per call or how many questions are being answered in general? And then the other goal would be how many people are getting confirmed reservations and we can check that by just you know going through the transcript again and seeing how many people have had confirmed reservations or in our reservation software that we have for our restaurant. All these things are just so crucial. Once you've put your agent into production, you have to test your performance. As like I've said before, you can't test for every edge case. And not only that, you can't know what things will improve it, until you get some sort of dissatisfied customer. So tracking performance is crucial. Even something as small as reducing the time per booking from three minutes 30 to three minutes, you're saving how much money per call and those things really do add up. The reason why I think this is such a big mistake is because I think a lot of the work done for voice AI agents, voice AI systems, etc., is done post-production. So once you've already put the voice AI agent into production, into the real world, that's when you start getting a lot of improvements as you start looking and analyzing those found scripts, that performance, and that's when you can start optimizing your voice AI agent for that specific use case. Okay, so the fourth mistake is poor knowledge base. Now the knowledge base has so much context and it's so important for your voice AI agent just to know different things. And the reason why I think this is an easy mistake to make is because if you're selling voice AI agents, you know, you have to get this information from your client and usually they just can't be bothered to give you all these different little bits of information. And that's why we often end up with a poor knowledge base. Basically, the more context we have in our knowledge base, the better. Our agent can answer more questions. Our agent can understand more things about the restaurant it is working in or in our example, the restaurant is working in. In other examples, the real estate broker it's working in, etc. You've got to remember that a human that was picking up the phone for whatever use case you're using these voice AI agents for had years and years and years of experience and all that context that person had gathered and understood and just had stored in their brain now has to be synthesized into some sort of document for your AI agent. Otherwise, it doesn't have this context. It is a very smart model, but it doesn't have the context around your use case. Just think about the difference in a voice AI agent that is able to answer any question about the firm or business that this voice AI agent is implemented for. It can answer every single question that anyone possibly could think of. The difference between that and one that can only answer two, three, four FAQs. At the end of the day, not everyone's gonna ask these same questions. And that's why I think it's so crucial to work on a good knowledge base. Okay, so the fifth mistake is no personalization or guest history. Okay, so this is something that I think enhances human conversation in the sense that us as humans, we can't remember everything that we talked about with another person. We can't recognize everything to do with that person. It is just obvious that there will be things that, you know, that person said to us, but we've forgotten. And unfortunately, we don't use that personalization in our conversation. And that kind of, you know, makes it a little bit worse. But these AI systems can have all the trans scripts save in a cloud in some sort of database and have all of that information always at hand. So there's almost like no ability to lose any sort of memory unless obviously we go into context windows to a point where, you know, there's too much memory, whatever, I'm going into too much depth. But I think it's extremely important for just improving your voice AI system or agent to have personalization or guest history. Now I'm going to show 
in a demo again with the restaurant reservation agent the difference between a conversation with no history and history and just the improvement of that conversation when you do have that history there will be some scenarios where having no personalization doesn't really matter because you know every time someone calls the phone they want a new conversation but for the example that i have you know if i call uh, velvet vindaloo and i already booked a table for four a month ago and you know i've told them i have vegan allergies i mean I've, and i've told them i'm lactose intolerant and now I call them again and they're like hi there you want a table for four again and you're the one with dairy allergies right that is just so much better than a fresh new conversation every time okay so i've added some context as you see right here so context about the person on the phone um my name is hugo last time we booked a four person table on friday 8 p.m and also that my wife has a dairy allergy so these kind of things could be used in the um context of the conversation and obviously this would be passed in um dynamically so you know this is just right now hard coded into the prompt but there will also be moments where the context would say n slash a so that would just basically be when the person who is calling or the number that is calling has never called the uh, restaurant before so we don't have any context on them we would gain this context from you know one conversation so we would we would get the name from the reservation process we would get the phone number from through the reservation process we would get the, what they booked again through the reservation process and then the extra notes would just be potentially something they said either um via the actual phone number itself and the phone call or potentially if we have the system complex enough the restaurant would now start putting notes into this database according to their number or kind of like accompanying their number or table and that way you know this ai would be able to even better improve its conversation and its personalization okay so let's test the agent thank you for calling the velvet vindaloo how can i help you uh hi there hi hugo great to hear from you again how can i assist you today oh hi uh i'd like to uh book a table for four for the family yeah absolutely just to confirm, is it for this Friday at 8 p.m. again? <laughs> no, it's not. It's uh, for actually Saturday, and I would prefer to do it 7 p.m. Last time you guys didn't have the uh, space for that, so that's why we did 8, but could we do 7 this time? Got it. So Saturday at 7 p.m. for four guests. Just to confirm, can I have your phone number, please? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just, again, the one that, you know, I'm calling you on. If you can just grab that. Perfect. Perfect. I'll use this number. So just to recap, Saturday at 7 p.m. for four guests. I'll make a note about your wife's dairy allergy too. Anything else I can help with? Oh, nice. I'm glad you remember that. Yeah, no, I was going to say only uh, to let the chef know that my wife has a dairy allergy, but you guys have your research done clearly, which is nice. Okay, bye-bye. Absolutely. Okay, there we go. As you see, like that conversation was way more personalized. It, it kind of got me blushing, to be honest, with how much the AI was able to, uh, you know, give information about my my previous restaurant orders and restaurant reservations and things about my wife and stuff like that. And it's, it's you know, it just helps to add um, some personalization and some, you know, merit to the conversation, knowing different uh, pieces of information about the person you are on the phone with. Now, not every conversation will be able to have personalization as like I said, some numbers will be the first time calling the restaurant. And obviously at that point, we don't have any information, but um, as we slowly deploy the voice AI agent and we you know improve the performance of it, then we can add things like this um, to, like I said, improve the performance.